what's up youtube uh working on the lt1 out of that uh 96 camaro that i bought for parts uh i have an idea of what i can do with this engine if it's got good compression good leak down uh my plan is to put it if it is a decent engine to put it in my uh, 80 trans am right now it has a 350 pontiac came with 301 pontiac uh, they did offer them cars with, basically, it's a second-gen Camaro. So the mount, uh, bull holes for in the K-member are, well, the front frame section is not really a K-member, but the front stub frame has the holes for a small block Chevy mount. So all I have to do is get small block Chevy mounts off, out of, like, a second-gen Camaro. Get a set of second-gen Camaro long tube headers, and that's pretty much that there. Uh, I will need to get a turbo 350 t uh, transmission, which I have happen to know where one of them is or yeah is and uh i will need to get a automatic flywheel well automatic flex plate i have a 95 lt1 that i had out of a parts car that's an automatic uh it has a flex plate on it i'm it's for a on a ford l60 so i'm not 100 percent sure if that will bolt up because i think the bolt pattern is different like if you're, because I know that when you're converting from an LS to a, uh, like an old Turbo 350, you have to egg out the holes and use this crank spacer. But I don't know if the holes are different or not for a Turbo 350, uh, uh, Turbo 350 torque converter. Uh, if the uh, transmission in the Trans Am is a VOPC, vehicles pontiac and chevrolet they will actually that transmission will bolt to this so got a goofy uh, multi-use transmission that car being that new it's a possibility but i'm thinking that that motor's out of a 76 oldsmobile so if that transmission's out of the same 76 oldsmobile most likely it's not a bopc it'll be a, just a buick olds pontiac transmission i don't know if they left that transmission in there but yeah i'll probably end up putting the uh, turbo 350 in it and uh yeah that's what i'm gonna do with it so right now i'm just taking off the accessories uh pretty much all the accessories are junk the alternator didn't charge the ac compressor is locked up but i don't think i can use that anyways be awesome if i can get that uh, notch the uh cross member out and make that fit in the uh, uh trans am the belt tensioner is stuck uh, it won't spring all the way in. The power steering pump seemed to work, but it's leaking like all of the power steering pumps did. So what I plan on doing, I'll have to get all new accessories if this pans out, but that's not a big deal. Uh, at least I'll know that stuff's new. The starter still works. It did crank over. So, but yeah, to put this in there i'm wanting to run keep the fuel injection i want to go to a 411 pcm out of an 0102 chevy express van it had the old school vortec 350 in it and it's very similar to an lt1 in the way it runs uh the lt1 obviously doesn't have a rear mounted distributor it has the omni spark distributor which is actually just a it's a front mounted distributor cap and rotor it's just got the optic sensor in it when you use the 411 pcm you get rid of the optics you don't use the optics side of the uh, distributor, so you get a little more reliability. These can be troublesome. Uh, I know I've had a couple of my black Trans Am had one that uh, took a crap on me. The 95 that I pulled out to get it running, I had to swap it out with another distributor we had. That happened to come with the car, which is nice. But if you're going to run the 2411 PCM swap on this, you need to have one with a crank sensor. This is... A crank sensor down here that's the 96 and up model the obd2 had the crank sensor these will do not have a cam sensor because they use the optics so on the 24 not 20 the 2011 or not 2011 the 411 pcm you will batch fire inject instead of sequential fuel inject which the 93 models came out factory with batch fire injection they weren't sequential yet the 94 and up were sequential fuel injection but yeah, I don't mind batch firing. Any type of fuel injection is better than uh, none. So that's my plan. I'm gonna swap it over 2411 
PCM that also opens up a huge amount of tuning capability, obviously with HP tuners. So, yep, gonna get the second gen Camaro mounts, second gen Camaro headers. Them are cheap, you can pick them up. They're just clam style, clamshell style car mounts. They're cheap. Uh, probably if I ask around, I probably have some people I know that have a set or two laying around, so I might be able to snag a set off them or something. But yeah, my plan is if this got good fuel or a good uh, compression, good leak down, if I get to the leak down portion, I don't even know. I might just, I'm just probably going to do the compression check. I'm going to go ahead and do that tonight. And if this has got decent compression, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. Uh, just throw basic gaskets in it. Clean out. Probably it's got some sludge buildup in it. Clean it out. Uh, it did have a miss. I do believe because as long as it's sad, I bet you one of these injectors are clogged up. So I'll probably put in a set of injectors in it. If I need to, we'll probably try to get running and put it up on the engine stand. And uh, once I get that motor complete, this is once this motor's done, this motor will move in its place. This isn't a big deal. Like this isn't a. This is kind of just a simple side project, just because I want to get that car to where it will drive, uh, just so it will move around under its own power. I'm tired of watching it set and not move under its own power. Once I do all this, then I'll probably clean it up, uh, do some uh, cheap body work myself. Needs rockers and it needs one rocker. Probably needs both rockers now, as long as it's sat. Uh, needs some lower quarter work. Uh, needs a front fender. I think the driver front fender is good. I think it's a passenger front fender. It's all, it's pretty beat up. It sh might be able to be fixed. I might try to clean it up and uh, fix it and just do a cheap paint job on it. Just make it look respectable. Make it look good running down the road and uh, just drive it and have fun with it. Uh, I'm to the point now that I don't even care if my cars look pretty as long as they run and run well. They don't have to look pretty. I have more fun driving my old pickup than I do driving my Suburban. So my Suburban looks somewhat respectable. So anyways, I'm going to cut you guys back on a second when we uh, get the uh, compression tester hooked up. We'll run through all these cylinders and see what the average is and see if it's worth saving or not. Well, I got the plugs out. I got the harness off the engine so she's a little more clean. And uh, got the plugs out. They were super, super, super tight. They don't look horrible. They're a little dirty. This was the... Uh, odds evens so definitely put a little never seize on these when i put them back in i'm not going to use them of course but i just want the threads nice and never seized when i put new plugs in it so but yeah to hold the throttle open so i can do a good compression check i just took the hole in the uh little uh oh, centric here whatever you want to call it where your throttle cable goes and zip tied it up to this the holes are wide open so that'll be no problem with uh, getting air in the engine. So I'm gonna grab the uh, compression tester and we'll get this underway. Okay, I got my excess power battery hooked up here to the factory connections to the battery. I got my little engine crank over button. I had to put the flywheel back on. I had a stupid moment wondering why it wasn't turning over when I engaged the starter. Well, uh, you dumbass, you don't got a flywheel on the back, nothing to uh, crank it over with so we got cylinder number one over here so uh, I'll probably show you this one then we'll uh, blow through all these real fast so here's cylinder number one 150 pounds that was three revolutions just hope this thing don't fall out. That's 10 revolutions. That's not bad. That's not bad right there. So let's go to the next one. All right. Cylinder number three. Ooh. That one may have a stuck ring. Cylinder number three was oil in the cylinder. I just add a little bit of oil. Struggles, that helped substantially. Makes uh, 140 pounds, so, I mean, that could be a stuck ring. It could just be a completely war cylinder too, so. I mean, 90 PSI will run, but you got a hundred, damn near a hundred pounds difference. That's, that's, yeah, that's not, not great, but who knows, it could, 
could come out of it and get better compression but so we'll go ahead and mark that one at 90 dry and uh, 140 a little under 140 wet cylinder number five dry <laughs> So that's pretty good. That's uh, 180, about 180 PSI. So that definitely has something going on with it in this one. So possibly a stuck ring from setting for a while or just a war uh, cylinder wall. So we'll go to the next All one. All right, this is cylinder number seven. So we got... Uh, 170 pounds, that's not bad either. Uh, I do want to state these are all dry and uh, cold, so compressions. So uh, Every one of them has been dry so far except uh, number three. That was that one cylinder that's questionable. So we definitely might want to look into this a little bit, at least stick a borescope down there. I have been squirting a little bit of oil in the other cylinders I've tested just to uh, lubricate them so they're not dry. So. Yeah, next okay, this is cylinder number two. That's a good cylinder right there. So we'll move on All to the right, next one. All right, cylinder number four. That's a good cylinder too, so. Yeah, Okay. Next cylinder one. number six. Right there, pretty much gonna say 190. It's a little less 190, but I like to round up to be optimist. <laughs> but yeah, so that's a good cylinder too. So let's go to the last cylinder and see how cylinder number eight. Final cylinder. So let's give her a go. So with that cylinder being done, the eighth one, getting the relatively good pressure there, like you see or seen in the video there. I'm gonna go ahead and with all that data, with the cylinder number three being 90 pounds, I'm gonna go ahead and do a leak down test on this engine. Normally, if I get all relatively good compression tests, uh, compression throughout the engine, I go ahead and skip the uh, leak down test, but being that is 90, I'll go ahead and pop the valve cover off and make sure and see the valves, make sure they're closed. And uh, I won't bore you guys with the, I might do, I'll do a video of cylinder three and uh, get the percentage leak down. Uh, but I won't bore you to death with doing the rest of the cylinders. I'll just cut back on at the end when I do a final, uh, final part. Uh, when I do it, when I get all the all the uh, percentages done. So I'll cut you guys walking on in a second here, and we'll see what that cylinder number three is all about. Well, I got the link down meter hooked up. Did cylinder number one, it was 15. She's a sludge motor, which was to be expected. So uh, she's pretty, pretty, pretty sludgy. But, uh, you know, it, with a little bit of cleaning, it will, it'll do. So this is cylinder number three. This is the one that was low compression. So let's see how the leak down does. Let's do 100 pounds on this bad boy. Gotta do the stop it there. All right. Ooh, that's not good already. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. Yeah, I feel that coming out of the crank. So that's rings, boys. That's 70%. That cylinder is uh, probably not pretty. Cylinder's not pretty. So that could be a stuck ring. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to take a peek, but that's probably a stuck ring. Uh, yeah, so that's 100 PSI. Right there, we'll go ahead. that's 100 PSI. We got 30% coming through. Uh, got some fitting leaking a little bit, but so yeah, that's 70% leak by. That's not good. So that, that cylinder is uh, no bueno. No bueno. So, 
I'm gonna do the rest of these and we'll see how they, 15, 15's good. I mean, 15's uh, livable. Uh, my plan is, I may run this motor anyways, because LT1s are easy. I have another LT1. And I would, if I get it in the car, get everything and get everything kind of figured out how I want it, I could take this engine out later on, build me a nice engine and take this engine out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get cylinder number five at uh, top desk center so I can go ahead and uh, get the rest of these. So we get the leak down, done. So we already know cylinder number three, no bueno. Sounds like it's leaking through the crankcase. So I didn't feel nothing coming for the exhaust or the intake. So it is, I could feel air coming up through there. So about to guarantee that's crankcase. So uh, yeah, we'll go over the results here at the end so we can see if there's any other really bad cylinders or if they're all even, so. Okay, the even side of the engine is a lot cleaner than the driver's side. So apparently that's where all the sludgy oil goes on every engine because that's how my 5.3 was. Here is the results, my piss poor handwriting. We got 185 cylinder number one, 90 uh, dry, 140 wet on number three, five, 180 pounds, seven, 170 pounds, two, 190, four, 200, six, 190, eight, 190. So we look at number seven, it's a little eh, and three is very, very eh. Uh, we go down to the leak down. We had only 5% coming through on cylinder one. It was coming through the crankcase. All of them was coming through the crankcase. I think the valves seem to be in all right shape. Uh, number three, 70% of leak by, that is bad. So that means uh, either I have a stuck ring, which is very, very, very possible for as long as this engine sat. Uh, that could be a possibility of my misfire, even though I think 90 PSI is enough to fire. 15% uh, on five, 25 on uh, seven, which if you notice, that's the second worst compression, and that is the second worst leak down. So, which if you look at here, number two had 190, yet it had 20% leak down. Number six, that had uh, 190 pounds, 5%. Four that had 200 pounds, 10%, and eight, 10%. It also had 190. So we can look. Obviously, the odd sides a little more, uh, a little more worn out. And the cylinder number three obviously has something wrong with it. So what does that mean? I'm going to do with the LT1. Well, I think I'm going to run it. You guys probably are call me crazy but i think i'm gonna run it uh if it is a stuck ring running it should uh should uh sort itself out hopefully uh if it's a scored cylinder it's just gonna drink a lot of oil but yeah so basically i'll, I'll put this get this engine in i'll get the wiring loom all that stuff done I'll take my 95 LT1 I got, because I know it sat long enough, it's probably junk. It's probably needing a full rebuild at this point. So I'll have that motor bored out, uh, and I might make a little 383 stroker, or just build a 355 and uh, bore it out and put new pistons. Uh, or not new pistons, new rings, or just new ring. Maybe it's bored out. If I can go out doing, I'll just do 60 thousandths. We'll do uh, six thousandths, and uh, I might not even do sixty thousandths. If I can get away with doing a small little amount of uh, bore on it, I'll just do a little bore on it and just take it back to stock. Maybe put a hot cam in it or something. Just make a nice little rebuilt LT1. But yeah, that seemed to be uh, a little uh, discouraging, but I think we will manage. Uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and close up for tonight probably might throw my excess power d4700 on the battery charger even though that hardly did anything to it so i may go ahead and buzz the uh ground and positive wire off the starter there then i can get this pushed over in the corner uh for right now i'm gonna go ahead and i'll close the put the intake back on this cut the zip tie 
Uh, go ahead and plug up some of the holes. Here's the PCV hose. Obviously it's, it's stiff as a board, so it'll get replaced. It's going in the tote of LT1 stuff. So go ahead and slap this valve cover back on. This side kind of is a pain to get on because of the uh, vent tube and this thing that could be taken off and then the exhaust manifold that comes up this high. So yeah, anyways, but like I said, I can throw this in and get the car running and uh, at least anyways and have and get everything kind of perfected on how everything wants to have. We want to get all the wiring ran. If the 411 swap PCM is going to work with the dam and uh, yeah, we'll see how that works. And uh, yeah, so we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.